Anti-Corruption Commission, CONAC in Cameroon, has revealed in a report on the state of corruption in 2016 that Cameroon has lost 1,302 billion francs CFA in between 2010 and 2015. Five sectors in Cameroon are responsible for these financial losses. These five areas include customs services, Boya and Betwa Treasuries, the National Cocoa and Coffee Board, Roadworks in Oh Nyong, that's in the east region of Cameroon, and illegal logging in Yabasi. Now with the debts Cameroon has and the amount of money needed for projects to be realized in the country, isn't this bad for the economy? Do you think this money can be retrieved? And how can we avoid such from happening in the future? And that brings us to our first talking point, Cameroon loses that amount of money in billion francs CFA to corruption in six years. Then in Zimbabwe, a uh, former army commander who led a military takeover that helped and ended President, former President Robert Mugabe's 37-year rule was on Thursday sworn in as one of the country's two vice presidents. General Constantino Shiwenga took the oath of office in Harare, pledging to be faithful to Zimbabwe and to obey and uphold, defend the constitution. Shiwenga retired from the military last week, slightly over a month after the military temporarily took over control in the country on November 15, culminating in Mugabe's resignation six days later. And our ex-army boss moves from Kupla to VP for analysis in Zimbabwe. Hello to you all and thanks for joining me in the studio with Views on the Continent on Afrique Media TV. And today our two topics on the African continent takes us to Zimbabwe and Cameroon. In Cameroon, we have discovered that over just uh, six years, the country has lost a lot of billions, over one billion, to corruption. As the CONAC, the organization that is uh, in charge of corruption in Cameroon, has discovered as of uh, December 22nd. And then in Zimbabwe, we are talking about uh, the former coup plotter who became the army chief general. Now, in Cameroon, on December 22nd, 2017, the National Anti-Corruption Commission, CONAC, revealed the scale of corruption of Cameroon's customs administration. This was disclosed in its 2016 report published in Yaoundé, that's uh, Cameroon's capital. The report showed that because of corruption and fraud practices in the country, which are widespread within this, the sector, the public treasury has lost 1.246 billion between 2010 and 2016. This represents uh, about 75% of Cameroon's public investment budget in 2016. A substantial part of this amount results from inconsistencies between the figures declared by customs and monies actually paid to the public treasury. Fellow viewers, before we get into analysis today and looking at what is happening in the continent, I would like to just remind you once again that during this program, you can intervene, you can participate uh, using any of the numbers on the screen. You can call us right here in the studio and tell us what you think about what we are talking about about today on this program views on the continent of Afri media tv or why not leave us a message on our facebook page views on the continent of Afri media tv we are going to read your lovely thoughts during the course of the program and uh, since zimbabwe is uh, one of the things we are looking at as well today before getting our reactions i'd like us to go to zimbabwe and um, see what uh, has been happening in the country ever since uh, the, the current president, His Excellency Mangangwa, named uh, the former chief 
of Army as the vice president, that is Constantino Shiwenga. Take a listen in Harare in, the, in Zimbabwe. Presidential Press Secretary George Charamba said in a statement, retired General Constantino Chiwenga and long-serving State Security Minister Kembo Mohadi were appointed as Mnangagwa's deputies in the ZANU-PF party with immediate effect. The party appointment is a first step in their elevation to state vice presidents. Two other top military officials were earlier this month awarded ministerial posts. Chiwenga retired this week, slightly over a month after the military temporarily took control of the country on November 15th as internal feuding escalated in ZANU-PF over then-President Robert Mugabe's succession. And now what is happening in Zimbabwe is clear to every African that what happened in that country was a coup d'etat, even if it was a silent one, but then they helped to remove the president of the country, the former president, Robert Mugabe, and now they have been rewarded. He, as well as a number of other people in the army who helped oust uh, former president Robert Mugabe are having different posts, I mean top posts, in uh, the present uh, president of of uh, Zimbabwe's uh, cabinet. We have him and other army generals are in charge of uh, taking over on the affairs or in the affairs in the country. Now, I've just been told that we have our first uh, participant of uh, today's program joining us in the studio. That is uh, Mr. Tayu. He's joining us all the way from Douala in Cameroon. Hello to you, sir, and thanks for joining us. Regina, good afternoon, viewers of African Media. It is my pleasure to participate in today's topic concerning the report of CONAS that revealed that the state of Colombo in 2000 that Cameroon has lost 1,302 billion francs within five years. I will never be shocked with this report. We are living in a country where corruption is the order of the day. What do we expect? We are people that are supposed to serve their country with fear and trembling. We are enriching their posts with corruption. Nothing you want to get in Cameroon without giving bribe. What a ridiculous country when it comes to corruption. Because the fear of God has departed from the heart of people. If the government wants to retrieve this money, it is possible. If accurate investigation will be done and trap down the cop uh, the corporate the corporate and bring them to book. Concerning the second topic the army boss that they became the vice president of Zimbabwe. I'm not surprised about it. One thing I want you to know, Regina, is that whenever people were desperate for position, they can do anything to have it. What you are seeing in Zimbabwe today, it was a made-down plan, agreed before former president was ousted with coup. What shocked me was that the president of the African Union did nothing about the issue. He only talked without an action. There is saying in the Bible that God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sweat, he shall reap. It's just a matter of time. They will reap all what they have sold, sold against Robert Mugabe. I wish you happy New Year in advance and uh, all to the viewers of Africa Minga. Thank you very much. God bless you. I should be the one uh, thanking you, Mr. Tayo. He's joining us from Dwala in Cameroon. Thanks a lot for always uh, listening to us or watching us and uh, even 
uh, participating during our programs. And now he was talking about what is happening in Cameroon and on Konak. He says he is not surprised about what is happening in the country. And on Zimbabwe, he said that it is clear that it was a coup d'etat. And he is surprised that the president of the African Union, Alpha Conde, did nothing about this. We have um, Mrs. Sandy. She's joining us as well on today's program. Hello to you, Sandy, and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Gina. Good afternoon, lovers of African media. Good afternoon, fellow Africans. I am Sandrine Fien. The high rate of corruption in Cameroon is really, really alarming and heartbreaking, especially when you come to think of the high level of unemployment that exists among the youths in Cameroon and the risks these youths take to travel out of the country, out of their own wish, because they are in search of a better standard of living. My humble proposal on this topic is that all those guilty of such malpractices shall be suspended, or better still, removed from their post of responsibilities. All their property seized, and the bank account should also be blocked. In this, I would rather prefer another neutral body outside Kunak to be assigned to carry out this action, because Kunak is not trustworthy given that they can be lured into receiving bribes and take their own share of the cake and close the case. Thank you, Gina. That's my own humble opinion or contribution concerning this topic. Thank you so much, uh, Sandy. Thanks a lot for your contribution. I mean, according to her, these uh, uh, people should try to to pay up what they have um, stolen from the country's treasury. Now we have Mr. Funker joining us here in the studio. Good afternoon, Gina. Good afternoon, viewers of Africa. Good afternoon to everyone on the, uh, the, st on the studio. Uh, Gina, concerning the talk, uh, talking point of today, I think a rate of corruption in Cameroon is alarming. I will not be ashamed to say this or afraid. Corruption has started from the head of state right up to the grassroots. Can you imagine, Gina, that uh, anti-corruption, how do you call it, as they call themselves, they are more corrupt than even the corrupt people. They need to start checking the, the, the anti-corruption group before checking the other people. How can they use this type of statement telling people the amount that has lo got lost since 2016 in, 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 in the Republic? What is their duty? What are they doing? Today they will accuse somebody, tomorrow they say the person is innocent, the next day just like that. Okay, look at the money Cameroon borrowed. Uh, the president borrowed from uh, uh, from China to, for, uh, to, to to provide computers for for, for uh, university students. Can you imagine? They are giving us uh, the figure of one computer cost three hundred thousand. If you calculate that, there is still money that is left. Where is the money? Nobody is talking about that. When they take loan, nobody knows. Now, a minister will sit and say nobody audits him. The last time they said before somebody uh, gets into any ministerial post or any post of responsibility, you will freeze your account. How many of them have freezed their account? How many? That are, in fact, I'm confused. This country, the Brinkman fever. Thank you, I raised my point. Uh, that is Brian. Thanks a lot for your contribution. Now, before we get into other reactions of today, I'd like us to go back uh, to Harare in Zimbabwe and um, let's really understand what has been going on there. I mean, we're talking about a coup d'etat and people who are being rewarded. I'd like us to go back to when the coup was still being plotted in Zimbabwe, looking at the army in Zimbabwe. 
Take a listen. Until now, the defense forces had heeded President Robert Mugabe's advice to steer clear of ZANU-PF politics. But recent events, which it says are of concern to the citizens of the country, have prompted the previously seen but not heard military to speak. In a statement issued Monday, Army Commander General Constantino Chiwenga accused counter-revolutionaries of hijacking the ruling party and threatening the gains of the country's liberation. The defense forces are obliged to take corrective measures, he said. In another section, the strongly worded statement warned those carrying out the current treacherous shenanigans when it comes to matters of protecting our revolution, the military will not hesitate to step in. It's the first time the fiercely loyal military has publicly differed with its commander in chief. It could mark a defining moment in Zimbabwe's politics. It's either President Robert Mugabe uh, stands uh, uh, by a state power and the constitution and says that I am the decision maker, I am the head of state, uh, I decide who says what, uh, especially in, in relation to the security sector. Or, and if he gives in to the demands of the security sector, then we will see a major shift in the politics of ZANU-PF. Two rival factions are fighting over who will succeed 93-year-old Robert Mugabe. One backs former Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa and is believed to enjoy the support of the military. The other, referred to as Generation 40, has been linked to the First Lady Grace Mugabe. The fallout from the escalating internal strife could be far-reaching. This is no longer a ZANU-PF matter, this is a national crisis. Why do I say so? Because we are talking of the interests of those with the, uh, uh, the, the security machinery uh, of the, and the infrastructure of the country uh, uh, being involved in politics. President Mugabe is yet to respond to the military chiefs. He's due to replace Emerson Mnangagwa at a Congress in December. Now, uh, former president of Zimbabwe, um, Robert Mugabe always warned the army from getting into politics he warned them about this but then all of us can see that the army did get into politics as well as uh, the former chief of army resigned a few weeks ago and today he has been sworn in as the vice president of Zimbabwe now it's clear to all that it was a coup d'etat in uh, Zimbabwe let's uh, receive for another participant hello to you and thanks for joining us Hello, good morning, Gina. Hello, viewers of uh, Afric Media. Good afternoon and happy new year in advance. Uh, Gina, I will tell you, this topic really it touched my mind this morning. I'm really saddened when I see such a message coming up today about Konak because this morning Konak, which has, Konak is putting such a report at a time when we are facing a really deplorable economic situation of 1,302 billion, Gina. This is really sad for a country which is having about 90 to 95% unemployment rate, Gina. I really, I speak to you now, my heart is really broken when I see such things like this. Because I don't think Konak, I don't, I, it's really, it's really deplorable. Konak cannot be doing such a thing at this time. And they are now asking a solution. They have gone to other foreign countries, they have attended seminars, and they know the solutions to best tackle these issues. They are putting customs and investors are coming from foreign countries. We cannot tax them to get that money from them. Instead, we tax our own brothers who want to improve. The system of Cameroon, Gina, I will tell you, is really sad. If you go to Nigeria, you will see this is a manufacturing company. In also Motors, which is new, the people of that of Nigeria encouraging their brother, they are doing manufacturing in there. Gina, all what Konak is doing, they are a bunch of thieves because still themselves, they need to be investigated. Konak is just a burden to, to, to steal money. The people are just there to steal and they pretend to put up resort. They themselves know about all this cause. So it is best for them to tackle it themselves rather than ask, they are asking this solution. If we give them, they are not going to put it into practice. So the best thing, Gina, I don't really know where we, uh, we find ourselves now. We are just in the middle of the sea, Gina. I'm just telling this is really so sad for a situation like this. We just, I don't know what can I say. We just hope that God comes to help it. It's really sad, Gina. Thank you very much, Gina. Thank you very much, uh, Tanya. Bless that. That's uh, very emotional. Uh, he is uh, not very happy about what is happening in his country, Cameroon. I've been informed that Emmanuel, uh, or oh, um, Emmanuel, I beg your pardon, Emmanuel is calling us from Boya in Cameroon. Hello to you, Emmanuel, and thanks for joining us. Participating in the program going on now. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Emmanuel, please go ahead with your contribution. We have lost Emmanuel. Emmanuel, you can always join us. This program still has um, about uh, 33 more minutes before it comes to an end. And if you're just joining us, it's Views on the Continent on Africa Media TV. And today we are talking about uh, corruption in Cameroon, how to put an end to this. And um, we are analyzing the fact that a former army chief has left from a coup plotter to the vice president of a country in Africa, and that is Zimbabwe. We have um, Peter joining us from Cameroon. Hello to you and thanks for joining us on the program. Good afternoon, Africa. I am Peter from Cameroon. Um, the topic today is very interesting. Um, I must say that talking about corruption in Cameroon is a mirage because we all know that Cameroon is a country where corruption has been institutionalized. It has been made a day-to-day -day affair within the government circles. It is something which is very normal in Cameroon for you to enter an office and for somebody to do something he asks for a kickback and he wants to know the percentage that he will get from a business or a deal it is very normal contractors come into the country and all of them they are being led into the mess funds are being dished out to control roads bridges and schools the those who are concerned with doing the jobs uh, you know siphon the money and very little is being used for the purpose that it's meant to. Um, I think the report of the uh, National Anti-Corruption Commission, CONAC, for mm -hmm. me, uh, would describe it as a non-event because uh, we all know that uh, fighting corruption is a moral aspect. It's not something which uh, you will see you're creating uh, cells for the fight against corruption. By the way, the fight against corruption should be uh, something that must be taken seriously because we have a leader that has been in the country for 35 years, the head of state for close to 35 years today. He has practically done nothing in the fight against corruption. I will say nothing because the amount of money that people embezzle is more than the money that is existing. Every moment we hear that somebody has embezzled this amount of France CFA and very little is being done. You take those guys and put them in prison and the money is in their banks. They are using them. Their family is benefiting from it. Nothing. Now, we have the head of state who himself is supposed to show an example. And it's a shame that he himself is not an example. Article 66 of the Cameroonian Constitution says that every person taking public uh, position must declare his or her assets. Till date, for the past 35 years, the head of state, Paul Bia, has not declared his assets. Nobody knows how much he owns. Nobody knows about anything concerning his financial and material details. That alone is not good publicity for Cameroon. And it shows a country where uh, the fight against corruption is just a mirage. So for me, I don't want to comment much about the what has been done by uh, Reverend Jodone Masigans because um, that body, the Anti-Corruption Commission CONAC, is just a body that has been put uh, to just uh, show to the world that at least Cameroon has an anti-corruption body. But if we look deep into the country, we know that corruption has been institutionalized. It's been made a day-to-day -day business in Cameroon. And that's really a pity for us, the youths, and future gener generations. For corruption to be, a start, to be completely eradicated in Cameroon, I suggest that the whole system has to go. It's a whole system. The whole system has to go. It's not an issue of replacing the head of state. The whole system has to go. There must be an overhaul of the governance system in Cameroon. And we do hope that just maybe the 2018 elections might afford Cameroonians that opportunity to go in for a change. Thank you very much. I should be the one thanking you, Peter, joining us from Cameroon. Thanks a lot for your contribution on today's program. I've been informed that we have someone joining us from Cameroon. Hello. Hello to you and thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, good day. Yes, good day to you. Please tell us who you are and then you go ahead with your contribution. 
Yes, I'm Linus calling you from Cameroon. Okay, Mr. Linus, go ahead. All right, I would like to first of all say that this process of uh, party corruption, I don't understand whether they are fighting corruption or they are catching the criminals. Because even when the criminal is caught, there is no day we hear a report of these criminals rambusing the state, the money which they stole. Because it is rather worthless saying that there is an anti-corruption body in this nation, Cameroon. They are just, it's just a mirage, as I can put it. What Cameroon needs for corruption to be totally eradicated is God. Because I believe only God can bring the necessary change. All what they are doing, presenting us lists of those who have been caught. The question is, is that the only amount of money these guys stole? No. They have been stealing. And there is no mechanism play, put in place so that it will be stopped. All they do is they are going backwards, they are going in time, into time, to catch criminals. But all they need is God because, but, well, whatever you may say, whatever the guy who is in charge of the anti-corruption body in Cameroon might say, I can say that no effective work is being done because right up to the little sectors in this nation, there is corruption. And for it to be eradicated, people need to have the fear of God. All what these guys are posting for us is rather useless. It's a mirage. There is nothing useful in what they are doing. So all this, permit me to say, it's, a, it's quite a good topic. It's quite a good point of discussion, but I don't have anything to contribute about that corruption can be stopped. No matter, even you give a, an opinion, I'm not sure they can implement it because it needs a total re eradication, total reshuffling in all the systems in this government, the useless government. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Linus. I should be the one thanking you. Thanks for your contribution on today's program. This on the continent of Afrique Media TV. If you have just joined us today, we are talking about how we can stop corruption in Cameroon. I mean, the country in just six years has lost over a billion francs CFA, and that is a lot for a country that has debts. We also are looking at Zimbabwe today. Uh, the former army chief, Shiwenga Constantino Shiwenga, who helped in uh, removing former President Robert Mugabe as the president of the country, has been sworn in today as the vice president as a reward in his role that he played uh, for removing him. We have uh, Boris joining us in the studio. He's from Cameroon. Hello to you, Boris, and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Africa. Good afternoon, Gina. Good afternoon, fellow viewers. This is Fred calling from Cameroon. Uh, to begin with, we all know the issue. So the CONAC Commission, or whatsoever you call it, is not different from any other commission of Cameroon. We know what happens to facts finding commissions in Cameroon. We equally know the information provided by the Anti-Corruption Commission of Cameroon. When we just look at the write out, you just uh, dropped we see a lot of irregularities on the ride out yes when we start citing certain areas we say five areas we fail to to look at the public service ministry we Um, Boris, Boris from Cameroon, we didn't get him to the end. But then we've been talking about the National Anti-Corruption Commission in Cameroon, Conak. I'd just like to inform us, uh, fellow viewers, that it was established by the decree number 2006 slash 
88 in French on March 11 in 2006 by the President of Cameroon, His Excellency Paul Bia. Now, members of CONAC were appointed on March 15, 2007. The CONAC is a public uh, independent body which comes under the direct supervision of the head of state. Its mission is to monitor and evaluate the effective implementation of the government's anti-corruption program in Cameroon. And um, on the 22nd of December, this um, commission or discovered that five areas in Cameroon have um, contributed to the countries uh, losing over 1,302 billion francs CFA. And these areas include um, custom services, the Boya and the Betwa treasuries, illegal logging in Yabasi, the National Cocoa and Coffee Board, and of course, roadworks in Onyong, that is uh, in the East region, construction of roads there. All of these have contributed to the country losing so much money. We have um, Jodene Akumbam joining us in the studio. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Hello, Gina. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to all Africa and uh, a special good afternoon to all Cameroonians getting my voice at this moment. Yeah, Gina, corruption in Cameroon has eaten deep into our bloodstreams and uh, is virtually almost impossible to fight corruption in Cameroon. And it is really crippling our economy because so much money is being lost. And uh, Konak, talking about Konak, Gina, what is Konak? If I may ask, who are those working in Konak? Those are some of the questions we should ask ourselves. Who are those who appoint those to who are working in Konak? And do you think that if I appoint you to work in Konak, you will investigate me? And if you find me guilty, will you publish it? Those are the questions that we should ask ourselves because even Konak itself is corrupt, Gina. Even Konak itself is corrupt. You find people in Konak that bribe their way to work in Konak. It's, it sounds so funny that somebody will bribe his or her way into, a, into an organization that is there to fight corruption. So how do we interfight it? It's just a circle that is going round, 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 and round. So it's very difficult because even right down to the man on the street, even right down to little children, now they already know that if you need something, you need to give something. Especially when you are looking for a job in Cameroon. So it's something that is, is becoming like a culture with Cameroonians. And this is because there's no accountability, no uh, assets declaration by government officials. There was a time they talk about that, uh, that all government officials should declare their assets, or blah, blah, blah. That was then. It has gone. Everything is quiet. Nobody questions whoever. So that gives room for so much corruption, embezzlement, and you name the rest. Yeah. The only way we can try to limit or to reduce it, Gina, because I know we can't fight it as it stands now is for all government officials to be accountable. Yes, they should be accountable for whatever they do, and uh, they should all declare their assets to the public. Yeah, every government official should be able to declare his or her assets so that they know who owns what in their government. And from there now, they can evaluate what you are capable of doing with respect to your job. That is how they can do it. But with uh, Konak and uh, whatever in Cameroon, <laughs> Gina, they are just there like uh, normal civil servants to do what the government asks them to do and then get paid at the end of the month. I see nothing fruitful coming out from Konak since they were created. They will always publish results. But where is the money? Nobody knows. Nobody knows where the money is. Nobody even gets an idea whether a franc has been recovered. So it's just useless publishing results here and there every day. Yeah, it's, it's just like a tradition. They just do it for tradition to show their existence. There's nothing like fighting corruption in Cameroon, as I can say now. Yeah, 
if we want to fight corruption, then we should be a strong institution that is there to fight corruption. And it should be independent from the government. Government should not have influence in any institution that is built to fight corruption. That is where we can say that we want to fight corruption. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jordan Akumbom. Of course, accountability is uh, the key word when we talk about corruption in any country, how to fight corruption. Every leader and his subjects need to be accountable. I mean, we have lost a lot of money in uh, the African continent so far. Not only Cameroon is uh, having this uh, corruption issue, but then other countries are suffering from that. And as uh, Konak is revealing to us today that Cameroon has lost over a billion of francs CFA, a country that has debt already, we really do need to look about this. We really need to look at this issue, I beg your pardon, and see how we can tackle it before it get it get into other sectors today we are talking about five just five sectors that have brought up this amount of money but then what if every other sector in the country contributes to that we have um, someone joining us from Cameroon I did not get the name that's uh, Evra Evra is joining us from Cameroon hello to you Evra and thanks for joining us on the program uh, good afternoon. Yes, Evra. Today we are talking about corrupt fighting Hello? corruption in Cameroon and uh, uh, Zimbabwe's new vice president. What, what do you yes, have to say uh, about this? Evra, go ahead with your contribution. Yes. Uh, you know, in Cameroon, we are talking about the anti corruption. Agency. Mm -hmm. We aren't. We aren't really talking about a body that is in charge of wiping out corruption. First of all, no. Um, the National Anti-Corruption Commission in Cameroon then, you is. You know, uh, this body is like uh, a firefighting brigade. Mm -hmm. We've, we've lost Eva, we've lost Eva, but then Eva, the National Anti-Corruption Commission, CONAC, in Cameroon is to monitor and evaluate the effective implementation of the government's anti-corruption program. They're just doing what the government is saying. And uh, of course, um, adding to, to what um, Eva is trying to 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 tell us before he got away probably network issues it is a firefighting brigade they are just there to quench the fire but then i'm sure he's talking about people who are supposed to to stop this corruption implementing programs to stop the corruption in cameroon we have money kenneth uh, joining us hello to you money kenneth hi gina good afternoon africans good afternoon and everyone i do think that's a very nice topic because i don't know we all know that such things do exist especially in cameroon but um what we should be thinking of should be maybe the way out or how can this type of issues be handled mm -hmm. like maybe in cameroon we do know that the aspect of corruption do exist and even to a higher level that people have turned it to be maybe to to be normal uh, a normal phenomenon like in churches we do see aspect of corruption like in the uh, market uh, places and even in offices so the question should be how can we change uh, maybe a mindset to be positive rather than maybe to lose our purity or even integrity doing the wrong thing which, which we do know full well that it is against the scripture. And uh... uh, well, we didn't get uh, money, Kenneth, to the end. Uh, thank you for your contribution. Of course, 
he is um, telling us what the country can do to stop corruption. That is Cameroon. If you're just joining us, it's views on the continent of uh, African media TV. And today we are discussing the fight against corruption in Cameroon. And uh, the new vice president of uh, Zimbabwe, who happens to be the same coup plotter who ousted former President Robert Mugabe. We have Ngwe Marcel joining us. Hello to you, Marcel. Good afternoon, Gina. Good afternoon, um, lovers of African media, and Happy New Year in advance. This is Ngwe Marcel Itungwe of Cameroon. Um, Gina, when we want to talk of corruption in Cameroon, um, I believe the one hour allocated for this program is too small because a lot can be said when we want to talk of corruption in Cameroon. And actually, when we see the way Cameroon functions today, we are going to realize that corruption is like an act that has been legalized. It is an act that has been legalized. It is openly being practiced in most institutions. Gina, you know, when the father of a house is corrupt, automatically even the children, right from the children, they will be corrupt. And that is the reason why you see the government itself is corrupt. That is, that is the reason why those working under the government, they are bound also to be corrupt. When we look at the way corruption is being practiced in Cameroon, nobody can say anything. Even the Kunak themselves, they cannot say anything. They are there only to give figures, but they cannot say anything. They cannot punish anybody who is who is who is practicing this this uh, this, uh, this or whatsoever they call corruption in uh, uh, corruption. Gina, let me just quote an example. We say um, it's like we've uh, lost Marcel. He was um, talking about uh, corruption in Cameroon, uh, one of the main topics of today. Today we are discussing Zimbabwe. We are discussing Cameroon as well, and we are thinking of how to to stop corruption in Cameroon and uh, we are trying to understand what is happening in Zimbabwe after the former army chief Shiwenga Constantino Shiwenga was uh, first of all he was declared as one of the deputies to assist the current president of uh, of uh, Zimbabwe, His Excellency um, Emerson Mangagwa as uh, one of his deputies. And then uh, later on, the president did say that today he was going to be made um, one of the presidents of the country, one of the vice presidents of the country. And today he took an oath before Zimbabweans telling them that he was going to be faithful to the country and the constitution. Now, what do we have to, to say about all of these? We have someone joining us in the studio. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Yes, today, today good afternoon, Zina. It's a wonderful situation in Cameroon. Talking about the corruption, this we report that the it is just like um, they are making a child play because corruption in Cameroon starts from bottom to top. If you enter an office, you will see that the thing is like flowing. It is a chain. You, 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 you start from bottom, they will tell you that if you care, you go and tell my boss. Can you imagine that you have a small contract of 1.5, 1.6 million, they ask you 700,000 francs before you even commit the contract. At the end of it, what will you have? You have to pay this, you pay this, you go to the, to the treasury, you go to the taxation, everything is like, it is like a fiasco. In fact, the country is discouraging every small business. 
you have a small store, they come there for 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 Satan, you will hear they will just give you an amount. that caller I, I didn't even get his name we're going to receive Terence so young hello to you and thanks for joining us hello Terence and thanks for joining us in the studio good afternoon Gina good afternoon to everyone for me I see this uh, corner they are just there, they are there just for a cover-up game. They are there just to cover up uh, things because you all will agree with me. Corruption in Cameroon is something that is nationwide. Not just, first of all, uh, government, because this same thing has been spread all over Cameroon. Yes, if we take down the system, because I hear people talking about removing everybody, cleaning the system, removing everybody and putting a new government. Before putting a new government, laws should be put in place that will, if I, those laws forbidding any act of corruption, that if you are being caught in this act, this and this uh, punishment should be given you. At least this will scare some uh, some some people for engaging them, themselves in such uh, malicious activities before taking out the government because without putting uh, laws in place that will prohibit and punish uh, these crimes accordingly uh, changing the government would, would, would not solve the problem this will not solve anything concerning corruption because corruption is nationwide. This thing has been spread all over the country. You all agree with me, there is no institution that you enter in Cameroon that you won't face this uh, corruption issue. So it's something that needs to be cleaned nationwide. This thing needs a nationwide uh, cleansing before we can start thinking of maybe changing the government or doing whatsoever this because this commission i don't see uh, the use of this commission since i don't think uh, is it 2009 or uh, 2009 2011 that this commission was created what have they been doing the money refunded uh, uh, from uh, those people allegedly uh, embezzled what have they done with the money for whose benefit is this money? So we need to see and uh, thought, tackle some of these issues. Who is Kona working for? Is Kona working for the benefit of the entire nation or is Kona working for the president or some particular uh, 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 government officials? Because if we, we don't uh, like see the mission and uh, the activities of this uh, conduct it won't change anything it won't change anything for me conduct should even be changed if there's some another commission should be put in place that will be neutral of anything concerning government because conduct is government so we should just forget about conduct and forget all the fa fallacies that are doing because whatever these people are doing is just a farce i don't even see it. there's no seriousness they're just there to cover up the government uh, fraud. I just had to cover the fraud. After one year or two years or so, they come up and present to us some fact we don't even know where they are coming from. We all know there is corruption in Cameroon. There is corruption in Cameroon. We need to see the punishment, the punishment given to these people that have been caught in this act of corruption. We all, we, yes, we know there is corruption. We need to see the punishment out. What is the way for if you have been caught in the art of corruption? What should be done with you? What should be done to you or what punishment do you deserve as a corrupt uh, as a corrupt person? For me, 
Konak is just useless. Is it, Konak is useless and should be dismantled uh, before dismantling uh, whatever institution in the government. Konak also should be dismounted and laws put in place that will punish whoever is being caught in this act of corruption. Thank you. I should be the one thanking you, uh, Terence Sayong. Of course, um, correct people, corrupt people should be punished. Hello, viewers. We've come to the end of this program today, and it is my last program of the year. I want to thank all of uh, the technicians who are always with me in the studio. A very big thanks to all of my friends and my fans. I could not, I cannot list all of your names, but thank you very much. A big thanks to my siblings, the Sundos, and my lovely mom, Marita Lundy. I thank you all so much for being with us, for being with me till the end of the year. Tomorrow, you have a program with Emanuela Nyoki. And from wherever you're watching me, it's goodbye for now. See you in 2018.